In this movie, I'll show you how to save some time by saving and reusing common tool settings. They're called tool presets, and I can guarantee that you'll be more productive if you learn how to create and use these tool presets. Photoshop ships with a lot of ready-made tool presets for some of the tools like the crop tool, brushes, art history brushes, gradients, and more. And it even has presets for the type tool. Let's take a look at some of these choices. Now all tool presets can be selected from a couple of different locations. To keep a big palette of these presets open to choose from, choose Tool Presets from the window menu. This lets you switch between all the presets very easily. But most people seem to prefer to select presets from the handy Tool Preset Picker located at the far left corner of the options bar. If you have Current Tool only checked, then you'll see the presets for the currently selected tool only. And here are some useful cropping presets provided with Photoshop. To see all tool presets, click the arrow for the menu and choose Show All Tool Presets. This gives you a giant scrolling list to choose from. To go back to viewing the smaller set of tool presets, check Current Tool Only. Clicking on a preset loads those settings into the tool and you're ready to use it, all configured in that way. The brush tool has loads of presets and they're great fun to use. Here's one called Aurora. Notice that it automatically sets up the options bar and even the foreground color. So a preset can register all of these settings and more, brush attributes, blending mode, opacity, and even the foreground color. And this is the effect that our new brush preset will produce. Now here's one with a fairly descriptive name. I always encourage you to do the same when you create and save your own presets because it can save you time when you're hunting for it in this list. Now this one has some settings saved, but not a unique color so you can always customize it. You can change the preset by selecting other attributes. For example, we could add a texture and then save it out as a custom preset. To do this, click on the new preset icon in the tool preset picker and give it a unique name. Then it's ready to be used whenever you choose it in this menu. Another big time saver is to be able to save type presets for typographic styles that you use often on projects. Let's say you plan to create a certain display type for a series of photographs for a project. You can create a number of these type presets, save them in a set, and use them over and over again when you work on the project. Here's how you'd go about doing it. Now I've gone ahead and created a type layer already just to try to speed things up. Once you've got all the attributes laid out, including the color, then all that you do is you go into your Type Tool Presets Picker and click on the New Preset button. You'll see that it shows up with a very descriptive name. It doesn't have to be this detailed, but you might include enough description to spot it in the list easily. There, I think that's enough. And there you have it. Every so often, you might want to reset this tool or all the tools to start off with a blank slate. To reset, control click on the Mac or right click on the PC on top of the preset picker icon. And then you can choose to reset from the pop-up contextual menu. You can delete a preset by choosing it in the palette and then control clicking or right clicking it to access the menu. Finally, you can organize your presets into collections and manage these sets a bit better by accessing Preset Manager from the Edit menu. And here's the list of tools and features that you can have presets for. 
You can load presets or collections by clicking on the menu icon. We'll select one called Color Harmonies 1 that ships with Photoshop. And it asks if it should append or add it to this list or replace it. So I'll choose Append. And you'll see that they show up at the bottom. You can rename individual gradients by control clicking them right within this dialog. And for that matter, you can delete them as well. Or you could replace the selection entirely by choosing Replace Gradients. And now these are the only basic choices that you'll see when you click inside the gradient editor in the options bar. And of course at any time you can reset it right from this tool by accessing the menu for the tool and choosing Reset Gradients.